Well, let me welcome you to lunch with the pastor. And it's Monday, the day after uh, our Easter Sunday. I hope that uh, you stayed uh, safe last night. Uh, a lot of storms came through the area, but uh, a lot of a lot of rain, a lot of trees down. I think a lot of water flooding. So I hope you're staying safe. Uh, what I want to do today is begin looking at some of the uh, post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. Now, depending on who you read and scholars uh, debate uh, of the number of appearances, and I'm not going to get into, into all of that, uh, some of them include where they see uh, it being two at the same times, then others divide those and say, no, they're two separate rather than the same account kind of thing. So there's probably, I'm going to say a dozen uh, post-resurrection appearances, and I'm going to assume that probably there were more than that. That's just what's recorded in the scripture. Uh, there is a place where, you know, John talks about uh, that Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of, of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. So knowing that there's much more that Jesus did that that is not recorded, that there may be other uh, specific appearances that Jesus made during the during the 40 days that he was with uh, the disciples after the resurrection. We know there were 40 days, and then he tells the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for 10 days. And then there would be the celebration of Pentecost. And at Pentecost, uh, the church would be birthed. Um, when you go to the resurrection appearances, it's interesting uh, that Jesus first appears to the women. It talks about in, in John chapter 20 that Mary Magdalene uh, came to the tomb, and that was before Peter or John or in, in, any of the others, um, that she sees the risen Lord right after, after her uh, going to the tomb, and then he later appears uh, to some of the other women. So in that, what it teaches us, there's a lot of discussion in the Bible, or not in the Bible, but about the Bible, uh, critics of the Bible who who want to imply that uh, the Bible uh, is anti-women, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, the Bible was written in days when uh, much of culture was anti-women. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, but what the Bible does is, this is my opinion and, and my interpretation, is I believe it liberates women. And the reason being not only because of salvation, but when you read uh, the Apostle Paul, Paul deals with the fact that in salvation, men and women are saved exactly the same way. There's no, there's no distinction. In the culture in which Jesus lived and the disciples lived, uh, women were not considered to be equal. And yet, for the Bible to declare that Jesus appeared first to the women, number one, places women in a very important position uh, in Scripture, a very important position in the testimony and the witness of the resurrection. And it actually goes against culture, because culture would say, no, you, you don't put women in that kind of position. You don't, uh, if you want to prove the testimony of the resurrection, you don't put women in that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, priority or that position. Um, on the Sunday night of, of uh, the resurrection, uh, John 20 records this. It says, In the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because of their fear of the Jews. Now, earlier, uh, the scripture had talked about how uh, Peter and John have the disciples. Um, it says th that the other disciple who reached the tomb first then entered the tomb and saw and believed, for they still not, did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. The disciples were struggling with this, and they, they were fearing the Jews because the Jews had killed Jesus, and they were wrestling with the, the proof and the reality of the resurrection. And it says, then Jesus came 
stood among them and said to them, peace to you. Uh, a lot of times when we go through some real difficulties in life, uh, it's hard to believe. Let's be honest. It's hard to trust. Uh, we struggle with those ideas. We struggle with those concepts. And it's there because of the presence of Christ that I think Christ says to us, peace be with you. And that's what I would encourage uh, you about today, that if you're going through a time of upheaval, which we all are, trust Christ. Uh, look to Christ. Realize that his resurrection is everything that we need. That because of his death and resurrection, he has transformed us. Uh, he gives us the promise of eternal life. And we have our, his presence in us. And so through the upheaval that you have, the fear that you have, the struggle that you have, just remember this, that because of the resurrection, he gives us peace. I pray for the peace of Christ to be with you today. Have a good day.